Hey everyone, and welcome back to another GT Online video. So I uploaded a video a few days ago talking about vehicles that need buffs in GT Online, and you guys seem to really like that video. So today I'm going to be talking about vehicles that don't need buffs, the vehicles that are the best for PvP in free mode. So up first is the Starling, and I don't want to spend too much time on this vehicle because I made a whole separate video on why I believe this vehicle is the best for PvP. I think that the Starling is on another league and I explained all that in the video I uploaded. So if you haven't seen that, I will leave a link in the description in case you want to check it out. So up next we have the Stromberg, and the Stromberg is the best vehicle you can use for taking down oppressors and deluxos, aside from another vehicle that I'm going to be talking about later in this video. It is the only personal vehicle that has resistance to rocket explosions, and it has its own lock-on rockets and torpedoes. And mind you, this vehicle comes stock with all the weaponry on board. And because it can resist 5 homing rockets before blowing up on the 6th one, it can easily take out deluxos and oppressors since the rockets have good enough accuracy to stay on target tracking those elusive vehicles. This vehicle holds the standard 30 homing rockets, but when you go into the water, it's going to switch to torpedoes, and it holds 60 torpedoes, which is crazy. So if you want to attack a yacht during piracy prevention, you can do it underwater by shooting the torpedoes up and out of the water, which is something not a lot of people take advantage of. Probably the only downside of this vehicle is that the lock-on range and max range of the homing rockets and torpedoes are marginally shorter than the vehicles like the Deluxo, so you'll have to get a lot closer to them in order to lock on, but the armor that you have will definitely help out with that, so it shouldn't be a problem. And the mounted machine guns on this vehicle are way stronger than the Deluxo or Ruiner mounted machine guns. I'm not sure why these even differ at all. Maybe one of the developers added one too many zeros to the damage value of these, but... This is how strong the mounted machine guns on all vehicles should be, because right now they're just pea shooters that are only good at popping tires. So up next we have the Savage, and the Savage is the only helicopter in the game that has an explosive cannon on it, one similar to the laser and the hydra anyway, and because of this you can put out the most DPS over any other weaponized vehicle in the game. Let's say you want to destroy an armored vehicle like an insurgent. With the other two options, the Hydra and Laser, you would have to make multiple strafes in order to take it out, but with the Savage, you can just hover and keep constant fire over the vehicle until you destroy it. And because the Savage doesn't have to recover from a strafe like a jet does, if you are against this helicopter on the ground, it can cause some serious damage. Once you hear the explosive cannon firing next to you, there's really not much you can do. The Savage is one of the best vehicles to put pressure on people that are on the ground. And the Savage when it first came out after the heist update wasn't really that effective, but since then it has received technically two buffs, but one of them might not be intentional. And the first buff was much needed, and that was a buff to its armor. It used to blow up in only one rocket, but now it will take two RPGs or two homing rockets to destroy the Savage. And that goes perfectly with the second buff, if you can see my air quotes. The lock-on hitbox of the Savage was relocated, and now when you lock onto it with the homing rocket, the rockets will go to a spot that is slightly under the helicopter. So this makes dodging homing rockets extremely easy with this thing, and that is good because the Savage is pretty clunky and heavy when it comes to handling, which made it really hard to dodge rockets before this change. And although the Savage doesn't have countermeasures, you can have passengers in the back with flare guns to deter rockets if you really want more defense. Another helicopter that is really good in PvP is the Akula. And the Akula doesn't have the firepower of, say, the Savage or the Hunter. You can either put Barrage or Homing Rockets on it, and I recommend the Homing Missiles because you can spam them. The Barrage Missiles only shoot 4 in rapid succession instead of the Hunter 7, so it's not that good. And having the Barrage without Homing Rockets will make it impossible to take out Oppressors because they're so small. And also Jets because the way you take out Jets with the Hunter is you get them flying in circles with the Homing Rockets, and then while they're evading from the Homing Rockets, you switch to the Barrage Missiles and fire away. But in the Akula with only the Barrage, you won't be able to lock them down to have a chance to hit them with the Barrage Missiles, so they can easily escape and get the jump on you. So, long story short, go with the Homing Missiles. It also comes with dual machine guns for the pilot to use, but they're way too weak for you to do any serious damage with. And you can upgrade the passenger gun to a dual 50 cal machine gun, but I'm pretty sure the last update completely broke this feature because it's supposed to have a gun camera like the Bambushka, Volatile, and every other passenger weapon in the game. But for some reason, you can't go into the camera, you just have to aim with a dot in third person, which doesn't really seem right. And the gun camera used to work after Doomsday Heist, I remember using it, so it had to be that San Andreas Super Sport series update that broke it. So hopefully that does get fixed in the next update. But the main element of this helicopter is the stealth mode feature, and in PvP this has so many uses. You can either use stealth mode as a defensive tool to escape a player in a jet, or you can use it as an offensive weapon and pair it with the bombs. For those who don't know, you can open the bomb bay doors and have them stay open while you are in stealth mode. 
So what you can do is go hover above someone, aim your bomb drop, and then go out of stealth mode and drop the bombs. Then go back into stealth mode right after you drop the bombs, and you'll only show yourself on the map for a few seconds. And then when the enemy respawns, they won't know where you are because you'll be right back in stealth mode, and then all you have to do is rinse and repeat. This is a really funny strategy to use against tryhards because they won't know where you are, so they will either blow themselves up nonstop, or they will panic and try to rush out a sticky bomb when they see you dropping bombs above them. And the Akula doesn't have countermeasures like the chaff or flares, but I consider the stealth mode to be a passive countermeasure, and to be honest, I'd take stealth mode over flares or chaff any day. The next vehicle on my list of best PvP vehicles is the Thruster Jetpack, and this probably caught a lot of you guys off guard because so many people say that this vehicle is pretty bad because they don't know how to utilize it correctly. If you aren't using the strafe mode feature where you hold down RB and LB at the same time before moving around, then yeah, the handling is pretty unresponsive. However, there are a lot of little tricks you can do with the strafe mode, and if you guys want, I can maybe do a full guide on how to use the jetpack because it's a lot to explain. Now, in terms of situations where this vehicle is good, I would say against people on the ground and for defensive purposes. I don't recommend using this for air combat because it only has 30 missiles and they aren't spammable and the tracking is pretty bad on the missiles. They're basically buzzard rockets, but you should definitely use this against people on the ground because framing the rockets is pretty easy once you know how to fly the thing. And for defensive purposes, the jetpack is really good as well. Not only is it small and can maneuver quite well, but it has this strange bug slash feature to it. I'm not really sure if it's intended or not, but when you're flying in a straight line, all missiles besides the Charnobog, Hunter, and Akula will blow up right behind you, letting you survive. You could even have a Savage chasing you down, firing rockets non-stop, and if you keep going in a straight line, you will stay alive forever. It's probably a bug, but it really does make the jetpack a little more useful, and you'll leave people confused as to how you're not dead from so many rockets blowing up next to you, when actually none of them hit you. So moving on, we have the Hunter, and more specifically the Hunter with a gunner in the co-pilot seat. Just the Hunter alone is pretty good, but when you have the gunner, there really isn't anything that can take you out, except maybe a dive bombing jet, but you can still take cover from that even. The passenger gun is basically the gun that the Valkyrie has, except the rate of fire is a little less. But one thing that is different about the passenger gun is that the aim sensitivity in the camera is insanely fast. I don't know if this is intentional or not, but I'm going to go ahead and say it is because on all the other vehicles, gun cameras, the sensitivity is extremely slow. I mean, it takes a good 5 seconds to turn around with the Bambushka or Valkyrie gun. The faster sensitivity on the hunter gun can either hurt you because you aren't used to it, or it can help you a lot if you do get used to it because it allows you to make adjustments so much faster. The first time I used the gun camera in the hunter, I could literally snap onto people on the ground because the sensitivity is super fast. Until the Valkyrie gets a buff, this is really the best option if you and a friend want to team up in a vehicle, because both the pilot and the co-pilot get extremely good weapons, and it's armored with countermeasures unlike the Valkyrie is. The next vehicle on my list is the Ruiner 2000, but not the personal vehicle one because I talked about that version and how it needs a buff in my other video. I'm talking about the fully loaded version of the Ruiner 2000. If you guys don't know what fully loaded is, it's a free mode VIP mission that you can only start up if you own the Ruiner 2000 special vehicle. And this version of the Ruiner 2000 is the buff that it really needs. It can take more rockets than you can count on two hands. It has unlimited top tier tracking homing rockets, unlike the measly 8 that the personal vehicle version has. And on top of all that, this vehicle cannot be locked onto, so any oppressors or deluxos are easy prey for this thing. Because oppressors and deluxos, they live or die by the lock on. And another thing, insurance is disabled in this mission, and it lasts for 20 minutes. So I suggest starting this up if you have people bothering you in expensive vehicles, because no one wants to pay for insurance. I keep seeing people in my comment section say that this vehicle is for noobs and it's a cheap god mode car, when in reality I can think of so many different vehicles that could easily destroy this thing off the top of my head. I'm going to be doing a how to counter on this vehicle just because so many people keep saying that it's OP. I'm going to show you guys in that video the many ways that you can take down the foil loaded ruiner, and a lot of them aren't even that hard either. The last vehicle on my list is the Half Track, and I'm assuming most of you are thinking, Half Track, I haven't heard that vehicle since gun running. Well, I'm going to show you guys why the Half Track is one of the best offensively defensive vehicles in the game. And I know that sentence made no sense at all, but trust me, it will soon. First, let's discuss the weapons on it. So, it comes stock with dual 50 cal machine guns, but you can research it to have quad 50 cal machine guns, and these things absolutely melt. 
I think normal unarmored vehicles blow up in 9 shots from the quad 50 cal and helicopters go down so fast as well. And that isn't even the best part. It's also just as armored as the Insurgent Pickup Custom, which takes around 27 homing rockets to blow up. So it has explosive resistance, and it's also bulletproof from the front and back. As long as you have the armor plating on the front windows, you can not get shot through them even with FMJ rounds on. And the back has no windows, so the only place you can get shot out of this vehicle is through the side windows. I recommend putting the medium armor plating on because it still allows you to use your weapons in the driver's seat while maintaining the bulletproof windshield. The half tracks insane defense capabilities with the explosive resistance and the bulletproof window along with the powerful quad 50 cal machine gun is why I call it one of the best offensively defensive vehicles in the game. Anyways guys, that is going to be all for this video. If you enjoyed or found it helpful, feel free to leave a like as well as subscribe to my channel for more guide and PvP related content, and as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.